when we want to make the bio bone. Okay, when we make the bio bone, this is very similar to the last step, but all we're going to do now is we're going to add some grafting material. So it's exactly the same steps as the EPRF, but now we're going to centrifuge for 700 RCF like before for eight minutes in the white blue tubes. We're going to use the 18 gauge needle. We're going to remove the upper two MLs. We're then going to place uh, everything into the bioheat the same way with the blue caps. And this is going to be done for 10 minutes at 75 degrees Celsius. Once that's done, the main tubes, blue tubes, are going to go into the bio cool. Uh, the other syringes are going to go into the bio heat and heat for 10 minutes. When that's done, we've created albumin gel. We then cool that for two minutes in the bio cool. And once that's done, we're going to place that into the custom tray, followed by the layer of liquid pure F. But now what's different is we're going to add the allograft. So add one layer of the allograft bone and then a little bit more liquid pure F. And that's what's going to make the sticky bone over top of the EPRF membrane. So the advantage of this technique here is that you're going to make a sticky bone, but the sticky bone has the outer extended PRF membrane built into it. Okay. So again, we're going to go through the protocols and on purpose, I'm sharing with you guys the exact same videos just so that people know that it's literally exactly the same steps. So you're going to draw out that liquid pure F in the exact same way, the, the upper layer. So it's the PPP layer, liquid platelet pour layer. Okay, so that upper layer doesn't have as many cells as the bottom portion, closer to the CPRF layer. When that's drawn out, again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our blue lids, okay? So we're gonna take our blue caps um, and place them on the syringes. At the same time, we have to make sure that those go into the biocool. Okay, so that's going to extend the working properties of the liquid pure F. Okay, here come the blue lids. Okay, that's going to go in the middle layer. And that's obviously placed in the bio heat. Now we got to wait the 10 minutes. So during that 10 minute period, like I said, that's going to turn into albumin gel. When that's completed, we can then take out the albumin gel. You can see it's a different consistency. That's hot, so we can't mix it right away with the liquid PRF. We have to cool it. And that cooling process is going to be conducted for one to two minutes. Okay, so that's exactly the same thing. Uh, same thing as the other steps. Now, just like the previous uh, video, the next step is to place the extended PRF or the albumin gel and make an EPRF membrane, right? So that's the first step. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the albumin gel and we're going to place it into the custom tray. Perfect. And we have to make sure that it's well spread out there. So that's the instrument that I actually prefer to use. This is the little compactor and it works very, very well for this application. And all you're going to do is you're going to compact it uh, densely so that once that's done, then you're going to draw up the liquid CPRF. So the next step, of course, is to take the concentrated layer. And then when we draw this layer out, we're going to apply it onto the albumin gel and that's going to allow that membrane to clot. Okay, so that's where the fibrinogen uh, and thrombin come into play and help with the clotting process. Again, you can take a little bit of the red, there's no issue there. Okay, once that's done, that's going to clot. And before it's done clotting, what we can do now is now we can introduce the allograft bone. And the advantage of this technique here is that we can combine the sticky bone that we're used to working with from before with an outer extended PRF membrane. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do here is use that little compactor again, and I'm just going to make sure that it's evenly distributed, the allograft. And depending on the size of the augmentation procedure that you're going to be performing, that's how much bone you're going to utilize. So if I need to make a large five millimeter augmentation horizontally, then I have to make sure that I have 
five millimeters of, of bone allograft, of course. And you can extend the thickness here based on how much you're going to load it. When that's done, now you need to reintroduce the liquid platelet-rich fibrin, okay? And that's going to be performed here. You're going to draw up the liquid PRF. And that's a normal standard uh, liquid PRF tube. Uh, so that's the white cap, the blue cap, etc. And we're just going to apply it a little bit everywhere. Okay, and then you can, uh, again, use your little compression uh, compactor tool to basically make sure that the allograft is incorporated in there. Once this is done, all you need to do uh, following this is simply to wait the 15 minutes. Like I said, this is something that you can prepare at the very beginning of surgery, and then you can come back in 15 minutes when you're ready and um, utilize it. And the nice thing about this is that one side is composed of the actual layer, the sticky bone, which can go against bone, and the other side is for the extended PRF membrane. So here's another video that's just going to go over this uh, once again. So here, first step, like I said, is to apply the albumin gel. So I'm showing double videos from two different angles simply to uh, educate uh, doctors that are watching this. That way there they can, they're confident that they can do this in their offices. So again, first step, we're placing the albumin gel. Okay, that's then going to be compacted. Okay, so we're going to compact this. Afterwards, we're going to add the liquid platelet-rich fibrin. So this is the CPRF layer that we're used to working with. So you see it there. We can pop the lids no problem because we want it to clot now. We're going to grab our 18-gauge needle. We're going to go right to the buffy coat zone. Okay, so you're going to draw out that liquid platelet-rich fibrin, uh, or the liquid CPRF, I should say. It's then going to be applied. Okay, so now we've made our EPRF membrane. If you wanted to make an EPRF membrane, you'd stop here, you'd let that clot for 15 minutes. Now what's different here is now, before this clots, we're going to incorporate sticky bone with this. So we're gonna take the sticky bone and we're gonna incorporate it here. Okay, so we're gonna add some bone allograft and then we're gonna use the compactor again and we're just going to flatten this out. Okay, so we're going to make sure that this is nice and flat. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Okay, we're going to flatten it out again. And then we're going to add the liquid platelet-rich fibrin. Okay, so that's how that's done. Okay, and then we're going to introduce the liquid PRF. And that can be, like I said, we typically, when we want to make the bio bone, I'll always... Uh, draw one or two tubes extra of the liquid PRF, a full-size liquid PRF tube on purpose, just because I know that this will require a little bit more liquid PRF uh, than just the CPRF layer. So here, uh, make sure you get enough liquid PRF in there. And then, like I said, you're going to compact it down, make sure all the allografts are soaked in there, and then we'll go over what it looks like at the very end. Okay, so you'll see the little video. Okay, so I just make sure all the allografts are soaked in there. And the advantage is the base of this is the EPRF membrane. And then at the top, what you see here is going to be the sticky bone that's going to be formed. Okay, so when we take this out, it's exactly the same thing. We're just going to, you know, cut away at the edges. Okay, and again, again, a mistake that people make is to try and take this out, you know, after a minute. This right here requires probably 10 to 15 minutes. So again, do it early in your surgical procedures. And then when you take it out, okay, um, you'll get something that looks a little bit like that. And then you can shape it or you can cut it, do whatever you want with it. But what you see here is now you've got the sticky bone there that's at the top. And then you also have on the other side, and I'll get it and lift it up here just so you guys can see it. On the base side, you have the extended PRF membrane. Okay, so you got an extended PRF membrane that's there. There's all your albumin gels, those, though that's not actually allograft particles. That's the, the actual albumin there. And then that can be utilized for grafting procedure. And the nice thing about this is it's got the sticky bone and it's got the outer layer that's built into it. And they're actually a lot uh, tougher than, uh, than they look. So like I said, this right here, you can utilize, bring it to your ridge and just literally lay it flat on the ridge, making sure that the sticky bone side is going on the right side. So again, here's another little video so you can see it coming out. Okay, I wanna make sure that we shape it correctly. 
Just keep it all intact. And um, the benefit, and this can be used, for example, in a sinus grafting procedure as well, where the extended PRF membrane can go up against the Snyderian membrane, for instance, just to prevent it from uh, interacting with the bone here. Um, but in any event, that's, uh, that's what it looks like. More commonly utilized for GBR procedures, of course, where you apply the sticky bone directly on the ridge, and then uh, the outer surface can be utilized thereafter for uh, extended PRF membrane. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Like I said, it's, uh, it's basically got the same properties of having an outer collagen membrane, but it's made all naturally. It's got the extended properties where it's going to last four to six months, that outer, mem that outer membrane, and um, produced for only a few dollars, right? So this did not cost a lot of extra money to produce. So that's the BioBone protocol there.